to our special discussion about election 2020 with a focus on vote by mail or absentee ballot voting in the state of New York. Our special guest is State Senator Jen Metzger, along with Andrew Gill and Dennis Fredette from Represent Albany. And I'm your host, Keiko Sono. Senator Jen Metzger was elected in 2018 to represent the 42nd District, which includes all of Sullivan County and parts of Orange, Ulster, and Delaware counties. Prior to her election, Ms. Metzger served for more than a decade in local government in Rosendale and co-founded and directed Citizens for Local Power, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping communities in the Mid-Hudson Valley shift to a locally-based clean energy economy. She's the sponsor of S8120, a bill to direct the State Board of Election to create a plan to permit voting by mail in the event of natural disaster or state of emergency. Andrew Gill and Dennis Fredette are leaders of Represent Albany, which is a local chapter of the national organization called Represent Us. Represent Us is a nonpartisan organization that fights corruption in government by advocating for reforms to voting, campaign finance, ethics, and lobbying laws. And I'm the founder of Forge Collective, an open platform for creating a humanity-forward society through shared experience and deep communication. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking the time in the midst of this incredible transformational period that we're going through. This is the year 2020. In our state, the Democratic primary is coming up in less than two weeks. Our general election, probably one of the most significant elections in the history of our country, is five months away. And this is all happening in the middle of a pandemic. What is going on with our election? What is vote by mail? And what is absentee ballot voting? What do voters need to know? So Senator Metzger, could you please explain to our listeners what is happening in this year's election, specifically with absentee ballot voting? Sure. So uh, vote by mail, uh, when we talk about vote by mail, uh, it, can mean a, it can mean different things. So, you know, I'll, I'll get into the finer details of that. But essentially what we're talking about is an alternative to in-person voting, you know, at, at the voting booth, at your polling station, uh, either on election day or if you have, you know, early voting at your polling stations during early voting hours. Um, this is, uh, in New York State, uh, we, um, we have, we have an absentee ballot system, actually 28 states in New York um, allow their, I mean, in, in our country, allow voters to vote using an absentee ballot. Uh, and what this means is that they uh, request uh, a ballot, which they are sent in the mail or they can pick up at their board of elections. Uh, they generally have to fill out an application and then they get a ballot sent to them in the mail and they can fill it out and send it in. Um, and we, we have that in New York, but we have, we have a particularly restrictive uh, absentee ballot voting process, um, which I'll get into in a moment. But the, you know, the, this pandemic has of course uh, raised huge issues for our democracy uh, for elections because um, you know, we want people to not have to risk their lives <laughs> to vote. Uh, but, um, you know, but there's this issue of, you know, we're all practicing so social distancing, we're all, you know, supposed to um, take precautions, and, and there's a huge concern that, um, of course, that in the midst of a pandemic, we could see a huge decline in voter participation if people can't vote safely. And I should say, it's not just the voters' health, it's, um, you know, it's the election workers' health as well. And, um, many of our many of the people that work at our polling stations are 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 older New Yorkers uh, and retired, often retired people, and you know that age group is at particular risk. So this was a this was a a huge a huge issue and a huge concern um, in in New York State, as I mentioned, uh, our our state constitution 
allows for allows for New York registered voters to cast a ballot by absentee mail, but only under a restrictive set of conditions. Uh, you have to have a legitimate excuse, and you have to check that uh, you you have to check the appropriate excuse off um, on your ballot application in order to receive a vote by mail. There are many other uh, a, a ballot for you to then fill out and and send in, cast your vote. Um, many other states have no excuse absentee uh, ballot balloting, meaning you 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 don't need an excuse. If you wanna if you wanna mail in your vote, you can mail in your vote or or drop it off at a drop off location or whatever that alternative is to actually showing up um, at the polls to vote. Um, and uh, this past this past year. Uh, last year, we passed uh, legislation uh, in New York State that would uh, it, it would amend the Constitution to allow no excuse absentee uh, absentee ballots in New York State. Um, but that is a, a process that takes time to amend the Constitution. Uh, it has to be passed by two. Uh, two consecutive legislative sessions. So the next, the earliest it could be passed again by uh, the legislature is next year. And then it has to be put on the ballot for voters to decide whenever, whenever we're amending the constitution. So um, the earliest that that could happen is November, 2021. Um, but here we are in the midst of a pandemic, and we want people to vote. What you know? What can we do? And in March, I introduced a bill that uh, that would direct that directs the state board of elections to develop a plan for an automatic vote by mail system. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But first, I'm going to tell you what we are actually doing in New York, <laughs> which is um, by, by executive order, uh, the, uh, the governor has um, said that voters can use on their absentee ballot application, um, use as one of the excuses, they should check off temporary illness, which, um, which would cover uh, the, the spread of COVID-19. Um, so it's it's essentially um, you know a a, a a stretching of that um, that legitimate excuse. It's not that much of a stretch, right? Because we are all in danger of getting sick. Um, so so that's the excuse people are to use if they want to vote by mail. But they have to go through um, the process of filling out an application, checking that box. Uh, and either mailing it in or dropping it off at their board of elections uh, in order to receive a, a ballot. And a, another step that was taken by the governor to encourage absentee ballot usage was to require that all registered voters receive a, an absentee ballot application in the mail along with a postage paid return envelope uh, for, so that, you know, to encourage people to fill it out, send it in, and then you'll get a ballot, uh, receive a ballot in the mail that you can cast. You can either drop it at the mail, you can either drop it off, you know, at, at the post office, um, you know, send it via the mail or drop it off at your board of elections. Uh, and, um, for the for the primary on June 23rd, uh, voters have to return these ballot requests by June 16th, which is just a few days away, in order to receive an absentee ballot and get it in, in and submit it in time for election day on on June 23rd. And uh, that ballot can be it must be postmarked on or before June 23rd to be to be counted. Okay, so so that's how we're proceeding with this primary uh, to encourage, but but polling stations, um, all of the polling places will, will uh, still be open. You should check, you know, always double check with your county board of elections uh, to, you know, to 
make sure you know where your polling location is. And there's also still, of course, early voting, which we passed, which is another reform we passed last year in New York State. Um, so, so the polls will still be open, but if, so you have a choice, essentially. You can either vote in person or you can fill out your absentee ballot application, receive a, a ballot in the mail, but you have, to make, you have to do that really soon. And you should have received your ballot, uh, your ballot application by now. Um, now, the, the, that is one system of vote by mail, an absentee ballot system. Another vote by mail system is automatic, is what I refer to as an, is automatic vote by mail. Um, it's sometimes referred to as universal vote by mail. Um, uh, the key difference is that uh, you, you don't have to apply for the ballot as a registered voter. Um, in, a, in, an, in an automatic uh, vote by mail system, all registered voters are automatically sent a ballot in the mail and they can um, uh, you know, fill it out and then um, different states do it differently, but you know, uh, drop it off at designated drop off locations or, or mail it back in. Um, an automatic vote by mail system has been in place. Oregon was the first state to put such a system in place. I believe it went, um, 1994 was the first uh, election in which they've used it. 100 million ballots have been cast by mail in the state of Oregon in the times uh, in the time since safely um, and correctly and, and have been counted. Um, other states that also have vote by mail systems in place are uh, the state of Washington, Oregon, Hawaii, and Utah. And uh, these, it just, uh, vote by mail, these kind of automatic vote by mail systems, they're just simpler, more straightforward. Um, uh, and I, I actually think it's something that we should look into for New York in, uh, in the future. Uh, we first have to amend the constitution, go through that process of amending the constitution uh, to enable universal. Um, or no excuse absentee ballots in New York. And then if we think it's the right way to go, we can pass legislation to, uh, to, to institute a vote by mail system as they've had in other states. And we can talk about that system and uh, some of the benefits of it and, and um, you know, so what, what's involved, if you'd like. Okay, so I'm sure we all have questions to ask. Andrew and Dennis, would you like to jump in? Uh, yeah, I would like to um, understand. Um, I'm interested in the process because we were planning possibly to run a campaign to have uh, vote by mail in New York State uh, by the uh, primary in 2022. And I think that you just said it's possible because if we could get the constitutional amendment and then it was voted on in the 2021 general election and the citizens of new york approved it then couldn't we have led people working on legislation so that as soon as that was approved by the voters we could have uh, would it take a special section or could we have legislation passed so that by the primary in 2022 it would be possible. Well, what um, what I the approach I would suggest if if we are going to go that route is to um, have legislation ready to go to direct uh, the state board of elections uh, to develop such a system. Um, so that and uh, because it takes time, you can't implement a system like that overnight in a in a state of this size with this many voters. And um, it, so it requires, it requires planning and all of this work can be done now, you know, uh, crafting, crafting the legislation uh, uh, to create a, a universal vote by mail or automatic vote by mail system in New York. And, you know, having those conversations about what, you know, what, what would we, what would be required, 
what would we, um, what lessons do we want to draw from the different states that have implemented systems? They've, they've done it in different ways. There are different ways to do it. Uh, so all of that work is important to do, um, you know, during this time uh, while we're, we're allowing the, the, the process to proceed to get no excuse absentee ballots in New York. But in addition to um, just the, you know, setting up a, a, a system like that, uh, there also uh, is an, a, a serious amount of public education that has to be done as well, because you're changing the way people are voting. Um, so, um, but I do want to point out that you still have to have polling places. It's not like you're going to eliminate on-site polling places, even with a vote by mail system, because, you know, you're, you're always going to have some people that maybe they moved or they, you know, they didn't get their ballot in the mail or something, or, um, you know, some situation it, you have to, you have to have, um, the ability to go vote in person, but, um, but they are, uh, you you know we would be very much changing the sort of infrastructure and setup of of elections as they have in other states. You know you have uh, obviously far far fewer polling uh, uh, polling places, um, but you may have, for instance, um, you know you or you will have drop off locations, places you can um, drop off your ballots, and at, in fact in in this, the states that do have automatic vote by mail systems, um, over over half the the voters uh, drop off their ballots rather than send them in in the mail. They 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 drop them off at polling designated drop boxes or or the board of elections or whatever that uh, state has set up. Uh, yeah, I noticed that in your bill, the uh, Senate Bill um, 8120, I think that's what it is. Um, Yes, 8120. It calls for all of that. It it says, yes, yes we, you can vote by mail. You'll all get a ballot, but you can drop it off. You can go to your uh, polling place on election day. You don't even have to use the ballot. You can just go vote at the polling place. Uh, so every option is still available. Uh, yeah. Well, you will have, um, you know, if you were, if you were to make, if we in New York were to make this system change so that you're voting, you know, we, we are, we are pursuing a vote by mail system, uh, not just in a state of emergency, but in elections generally, um, you know, you, 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 there will be changes. You obviously you wouldn't have all of the polling stations, um, open. You wouldn't need them if people are voting by mail. Um, so you would you would have to have some, as I said, you have you have to you have to do it in a way that you ensure that, you know, everyone can vote um, and you're taking every circumstance into account. But it does look different. Elections look different in those states that have automatic vote by mail. Yeah, we uh, did a little polling and we actually uh, called the Warren County Board of Elections. I did that. And they uh, the indications we got from them are it actually would be less expensive. Uh, because they already have a, a printer who can print all this. They could handle an election right now. Of course, that's a small county with not, not a lot of voters, right. but they could actually... Did you say Delaware County? Pardon? Is that what you said? Did you say Delaware no, County? No, Warren County. Yeah, oh, Warren, Warren County, County okay. in upstate state New York. Uh, and right. um, they said, we could do it now. It would be less expensive. We would have fewer polling yeah. places, but um, it would be helpful uh, and would keep people safe. So we're planning yeah. maybe to, I mean, for her, yeah. we're planning to do a little gonna, more research and find out what it would be like in the rest of the state. But yeah, it's certainly easier in, in very rural areas. And of course, you know, Oregon is a very rural state. Um, and, uh, you know, we didn't talk about some of the benefits of it, but, um, you know, one benefit is that in areas where, you know, you don't um, you don't have public transportation uh, systems where transportation is an issue. Uh, um, you know, having a vote by mail system can you know make it much easier for people to vote, uh, which is which is very important. 
um, but it is in more for it's a it's it's certainly a less costly solution for more um, and and probably easier to implement for for very rural counties uh, compared to say New York City yeah <laughs> or more more densely populated areas and there's you know because you you remember all of those ballots have to be uh, verified. They have to be counted. There's all kinds of technology out there and, and the states that do have it, you know, uh, vote by mail systems, they're, they're doing different things, availing themselves to different types of technology. Um, but, uh, um, there, there are ways to, that it, uh, there are technological solutions that have made voting vote by mail, um, uh, less cumbersome in terms of, you know, verifying and counting up the votes, et cetera. But, you know, there's still, there, these are still major, uh, again, I keep saying it's a system change. So you want to, you want to take your time, do it correctly and make sure that everyone is well educated um, about the change. So if I can bring the conversation back to this year's election, what is going on with your bill? Mm -hmm. is 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 it moving is there still a possibility for passing what's going on i don't i i don't think it it will go forward i mean we've already basically we we've moved in the direction of um um using and modifying our absentee ballot process for this election um and the main the main the main issue is the question of of the uh, the constitutionality of instituting a vote by mail system now um you know we were looking at, you know we were reading the constitution you know we were and and kind of you know exploring whether the provision to ensure the continu continuity of government in an emergency would be a legitimate reason to authorize uh, an automatic vote by mail system, but you know we've had discussions uh, with experts at the Brennan Center for Justice, for instance, um, and other, others, and there there are concerns that um, that that is not that clause could not be relied upon uh, for that. And what we really don't want to see is. Uh, any excuse to challenge the outcome of, of the elections and such important elections <laughs> this year. So, um, so that I, it, for right now, I think we're going, um, you know, we're on, tr we're going to probably stay this course that we're on encouraging people to use their absentee ballot um, and go through that process. I did want to mention one other bill that was uh, put forward by my colleague, Senator Zellner Myrie, which I really hope that uh, we passed. Um, and that would enable people to apply for their absence, absentee ballot on, electronically uh, without having to provide a signature. Remember, this is just an application. It's not the ballot itself. The, Everyone still has to sign their actual ballot uh, to, uh, you know, prove that they are a registered voter. But uh, we want to make it easier for people to get their absentee ballot application. But it's going to be it's going to be tough. And I want to say too, like the cost is significant too, because um, and and costs are really tough right now, uh, you know, um, in this fiscal climate additional costs but you know and we you had mentioned earlier that it could be less expensive for automatic vote by mail um that is uh that is is conceivably true um because you're reduce you're you're vastly reducing the number of polling sites and election workers that you need and um you know that kind of thing but um uh, but but in this case you know we're we're having it all. Basically, it's addition any uh, it's additional costs to send everyone an absentee ballot application. It's we're doing whatever we can to make sure everyone can vote during this very difficult time. But 
all polls will still be, you know, or as many polls as possible will still be open. Um, so, so yeah, it's all, 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 all means of being able to vote are on the table for this election, but we definitely want to make it possible for the most important thing is for people to have the confidence that they can vote safely. That is the most important thing. Okay, so maybe this is a good time to talk about the security of um, vote by mail or absentee ballot voting. Andrea and Dennis, I know that you have a lot of information on this too. So can we open up and talk about how secure this method is? Or if there are any reasons of concern, let's share that here as well. Well, we were wondering not just about security, but about any uh, impediments uh, to it. One, one would be cost about actually getting a universal bubble mail system. So one would be cost, one would be security, um, and uh, uh, just a matter of the logistics, like you've been talking about, of actually getting everything ready, getting the technology ready, uh, everything will flow smoothly. So there's three issues there. One of them mm-hmm. was security. Um, we we polled some of the BOEs and they don't seem that that think that security is a problem at all. Well, um, yeah, actually, I think we could say that because they describe to us the security they have in place now. That their ballots the ballots have a range. It starts with this number and it mm-hmm. ends with this number. And uh, they check every ballot that comes in. They check it off a list yeah. saying that voters voted. They, if the fo- voter goes to a polling place and votes again, they catch it and they go. They actually told us, well, sometimes older voters do that. They'll vote twice because they forget they thought yeah. they sent their ballot in. But they seem to have a very robust way of uh, making sure that everybody votes once and um, uh, catching anything that uh, it does mm-hmm. come through. And then, of course, the logistics, right. we talked to them about that. And that little BOE, they thought, no, it's not a problem for us. So maybe you could tell us about those mm-hmm. three things, the logistics and those security. Right. right. Well, I would just say that, um, you know, keep in mind that we've we've always had absentee voting. And Literally a quarter of all votes cast in this country in 2018 were by absentee ballot. I mean, uh, you know, my 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 dad, he just passed away, but he, uh, in this past November, but he uh, and um, uh, and all of his his neighbors uh, where he lived, he lived in a residential continuing care facility, they all voted by mail. They got their ballots in the mail. They voted by mail. And that was just, you know, that's, and a lot of seniors vote that way. Um, uh, so, um, it, it, it has, there is, there is, a, you hear a lot from Republicans about voter fraud. It is, it does just doesn't happen. I mean, it's so rare. It is really so rare. And again, like 250 million absentee ballots have been cast in this country since the year 2000, you know, and there's been like 0.000001 um, uh, um, questions of voter fraud. Like it just, it just, you know, but having said that, you know, you, you still have to, you still have to take all there. It's, it's, it's still, it's different from in-person voting and you have to take the precautions to make sure that votes are secure. Um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, that's very important. But as I, I have a, a good friend from college who uh, she's a professor at the University of Oregon where they have vote by mail. For, and, and she said it's 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 the ultimate system. It's got the ultimate paper trail. You know, they are paper ballots <laughs> that you're filling out. It's the ultimate paper trail. Um, so, you know, you can do an audit of votes after an election. And, you know, there's um, it's it's but there. Um, there are different systems that uh, different states use, barcode systems to, uh, you know, where each, I mean, each individual ballot has 
um, you know, is associated with the registered voter, that it has personal, you know, information verifying who they are. Um, I, I can't remember which state it was, but one, uh, at least one state actually has a system, a tracking, a barcode tracking system on the envelope through through um, through the postal service, so that you can fig- so that you can actually track your ballot as a voter. You can see <laughs> where your ballot is, whether you know. So, um, you know, there there are um, you know pretty good systems in place that we we can can be using. We don't need that for absentee ballot voting right now, which is something we've been doing for a long time. But if we switched to an, to a vote, an automatic vote by mail system, you would want to have those kinds of security systems in place. One, one thing I wanted to, to mention in response to what you said is that um, it's talking about security has been a really um, common talking point among some Republicans. And I just think that's really unfortunate that it started to become a partisan issue because it really doesn't need to be. And we've seen in those states, uh, the states like Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Washington, Utah, it's had a lot of success. And not all of those states are Democratic yeah. states. Uh, you know, Utah especially is a Republican leaning state. And from what I understand, um, you know, the Republicans speak really favorably about it there too. And I, I wish... Yeah. And they've come around in the other states as well. Right. I mean, in Oregon, they had... The story I heard is that they had initially fought it in Oregon. Um, and uh, what what ultimately won uh, them over uh, in the state legislature was uh, the just the fiscal savings argument of um, switching to a a vote by mail system, but in the time sense, I mean, they're, they're, people love their vote by mail system in the states that have it. They love it. They would never go back. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really, uh, it was unfortunate, the comments that were made about the president, you know, uh, about, it's just, um, and there's, there's no evidence that statistically, there is no evidence that vote by mail helps one party over another, or that's another argument that's been made that is um, just not borne out by statistics. Um, people just have to look at the data. The data tells a very clear story that this is um, a system that that works. Is there any bipartisan support for vote by mail in general? Um, I don't... I. I mm, I haven't heard a lot of bipartisan support for it in the state legislature and in the discussions about um, vote by mail. You know, we we just, um, you know, in the discussions of Senator Myrie's bill, the the typical concerns about voter fraud were raised. So, um, so no, I would say that at least in terms of uh, the state legislature. I don't. I don't see bipartisan support for this. Um, but you know, I'm wondering after this year, though, um, after we go through two elections. I mean, at least for Democrats, um, that primary and the general general election, people will have experienced absentee ballot voting. So after this year, do you think there'll be more support in general to make this a permanent law? Um, yeah, yeah, I think, um, I think so. I mean, I, I also want to just one point I didn't, I didn't mention, but that's really important to mention is that um, vote by mail makes it reduces the hurdles for registered voters. I mean, I talked about transportation, but it's not just transportation, you know, in these other states, you, you get to sit with your ballot for a period of time. You know, it's I, probably the time limits in different, different states, but at least a couple of weeks, right? You can, if you work three jobs, which a lot of people do, you know, if you're, I, you, it's, it's hard to get to the polls on election day, even, even in, um, even with early voting, it can be just really difficult for people. Everyone's, lives are over over scheduled super busy with work with family with everything else and it's just much more convenient to be able to drop your ballot off at a in a in a drop off box or at the board of elections when you have the moment to do that you know as opposed to 
um, you know, during the limited number of polling hours. So they actually saw, you know, significant, you know, increase, significant increase in voter turnout with, with vote by mail systems. And, you know, in New York, we've historically been just, you know, near the bottom in terms of voter turnout. We've had a, we're, um, you know, I think that we're hopefully we're going to see a lot of improvement because we passed some important election reforms last year. Um, but, you know, in Oregon, they saw 80 percent turnout in a in a presidential election. We can only hope we can. <laughs> that's a dream for here in New York State, which I hope we realize one day. But but um, but, you know, we're nowhere near that. I have to say, this is my very first time voting by absentee ballot voting, and I love it. I I, th I love the convenience. I love being able to take the take time with my ballot. I love, yeah, I just love having control over you know when and how I'm vo voting. Um, also, if I can just um, touch upon something that we said earlier, the ability, the mechanism to check on the status of your voting. I think this is really important. Mm -hmm. I've read somewhere that um, in the past, in some other state, there was a lack of this mechanism. And that was a problem because people didn't know if their votes went through or if it was cast in the right way. So if there is that mechanism in place, I think that'll really give voters a peace of mind. And again, it's, um, it's it's so much too about voters knowing and understanding what what this system of voting is about what the deadlines are and especially you know it's very hard in a pandemic to change things <laughs> uh, you know I, I mean it's not just in elections it's across the board you know we've had to change and modify things in so many ways um to keep people safe and healthy uh but but, you know, I want people to keep in mind, fill out that, fill out that absentee voter application, check off temporary illness, which you can check off in the midst of a pandemic, even if you are not ill at the moment, um, and, and, and make sure that you send that ballot application in by, by June 16th so that you can get the ballot in time for the election. And, and then when you get that ballot and you fill it out, Make sure that you have it postmarked on or before election day on the 23rd. So very important. Um, are we going to repeat the same thing for November? Uh, so there has not, we don't, we haven't talked about November yet uh, at, the, at the state, or there hasn't been any, I should say there has not been any formal announcements by, about what's happening in November. Um, you know, I think that, uh, Again, like 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 everything during this pandemic, there's so so much uncertainty. We don't know what what it's going to be like in November, where we are going to be in terms of this public health crisis. Uh, from my perspective, planning is the key. Be, just making sure that you're ready. I think that we should look at this primary uh, um, this primary election. We should learn from it, see, you know, see what what lessons we can draw from from this experience, because we do have some new things in place and uh, and make sure that, uh, you know, whatever plan we come up with for November, we um, we invest in the in the voter education and outreach that needs to happen to make sure that people can exercise that most fundamental democratic right. Well, we're here to help in that effort, for sure. Well, great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, takes advocate, it, takes, it takes advocates. It takes everyone out uh, helping get that message out. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Some of, the, some of the county board of elections have done a really good job, too. I've seen some of the things they've sent out and well in advance of when they were sending the applications out and with the applications and everything. And I just... I commend the those those county boards elections. Yeah, and they work so hard, and they are under um, they are under just incredible pressure, you know, with all of these changes. And those are the boots on the ground. Those are the those are the people making the changes, you know. So 
I always, you know, from I'm always have that in my mind at the state level because um, they also are bearing costs. You know, there are real costs to this. There was funding in the um, in the CARES Act for elections to help offset um, these additional costs during a pandemic, which would be helpful. But we have to be, you know, we have to be mindful of what of you know what we're imposing at the county level and uh, provide them with whatever kind of, and get their input, you know, it is very different county to county. I mean, as you said, in Warren County, and, you know, I, I have counties in my district where it would be um, far more straightforward to implement vote by mail, <laughs> and it would be preferable from their perspective, at least a couple of the elections commissioners I, I spoke with, um, you know, and for others, it's it's more difficult. They're, they're much they're much more populous districts or counties. And, and so, you know, it's, it's a mix. Not every county is, is the same. Now, can we talk about vote by mail beyond 2020, specifically how to make this a permanent law in the state of New York? Dennis and, and Andrew, I know that this is the area that you're really interested in. So um, how do we make this happen? Uh, yeah, one one of the things we just talked about is how you think there are some really valuable lessons to be learned from this primary election coming up. And you were saying that that could have a lot of implications for November. I'm thinking that just the fact that as a state, we had to ramp all this up so quickly just to you know expand absentee ballots, that this is a really good sort of jumpstart to you know use that momentum to, to shoot for vote by mail, maybe sooner than a lot sooner than we would have been able to otherwise. I think that's one of the things that makes me think potentially 2022 is a more reasonable goal than it would have been before all this happened. Whereas, you know, if you're going from the system the way we had it before, just a full vote by mail, that might, we might not have been ready to go by 2022. So I don't know. What, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, well, certainly more people are going to be voting by mail and we've already, uh, there was just a New York times article uh, the other day, might have been yesterday um, just about the huge increase in uh, voting by mail in other states and absentee voting in other states um, and, you know, in primary. So, I, you know, I think that, you know, I think definitely people's experience with it, um, you know, is going to be important, but we want them to have a good experience with it too. You know, their votes need to get counted, their ballots need to get in on, you know, in on time uh, and the like. Um, but, uh, you know, I just keep coming back to, um, you know, when we're looking to the future, any changes we make in New York's election system, you know, where we are in a very fortunate position and that we can learn from other states experiences who have had this such this system in place for, well, in the case of, of Oregon, it's been 15 years, you know, it's 10, it's a lot, there's like long records of experience. Um, and uh, we're, of course, different state <laughs> than, um, than some of these other more, um, uh, more sparsely populated states. But, um, but we have, you know, there's, we, we're, we shouldn't reinvent the wheel, we should take advantage of, of the learned experience and, um, and, and build on that. Um, I'd like to get a little more clarification on um, the, um, I think you were talking about, we could have legislation, be working on legislation uh, and have it in place, have the bills ready to go so that once the constitutional issues were settled, hopefully by the general election in 2021, we could be ready to go if those bills could immediately be passed. We could make a uh, primary 2022 deadline or at least a general election 2022 deadline. And so you're probably a more general election would be yeah, more reasonable. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, that's another thing. I mean, again, these are all Eric, you, we need to look at the experience of other states, how long it took them to get the systems in place that yeah. they have. I, I just was um, more it, you know, interested in that. How would that process, what would be going on? Uh, and, and what what uh, 
year the the legislatures uh, would take up certain things do you see any any reason why the legislation actually couldn't be prepared and ready no it could it could be a bill could theoretically be introduced next year okay good if that bill were to be introduced next year and for us to support it which individuals and groups should we approach to build a powerful coalition and mount an effective campaign? Uh, well, you know, certainly the members of the chairs and the members of the elections committees in the, in the Senate and Assembly. Um, you know, uh, Senator Biaggi has had, she, I know, is very interested in this issue and has put legislation in on this issue. She, she had introduced a bill to expand the, um, you know, absentee uh, balloting excuses in New York so that people could vote during this pandemic. Uh, you know, and I mentioned Senator Myrie's bill. Um, so I, you know, I think I think those are natural. Uh, um, I shouldn't say. I, allies necessarily, but people to reach out to, to as potential allies um, on this. And what is the role of a national campaign? I've been receiving emails from people like, you know, Michelle Obama or uh, Delgado pushing for vote by mail, but is there something that really can be done on a federal level? Or um, is this just strictly um, for PR to push vote by mail? Um, oh, for each state. I mean, as long as there are state, as long as there are state constitutional issues, it ha those have to be addressed. You know, you can't um, override the state constitution. <laughs> but it's important. Again, you know, I think I, you know, I'm a believer in collaborating with other states too, and state that are interested in moving moving legislation forward and. Um, you know, there's, you know, we've, we've seen, we, we've, we've been collaborating with other states in our region on, um, a wide range of issues, um, including, uh, in this pandemic. Um, so, so I think that, I think it is a good approach. Great. Um, do you have any other questions, Andrew and Dennis? I was just going to ask if you have any other sp uh, specific recommendations for us, anything that we can do to help in the meantime. Um, you said, you know, reaching out to the, the boards of election. We're actually planning on doing that. Talk to as many commissioners from as many different counties as we can. I think that's really important. I think it's um, it's really important to hear uh, what their what concerns they have, where they what they feel about the different uh, ways of voting. Um, I would love to see. I would love to see a survey done of, uh, of county boards of election uh, commissioners on that. I think it would be uh, very interesting. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it, they ha absolutely have to be partners in the process. Uh, so um, so I, I applaud your work in speaking with starting there with commissioners. I think that's really important and definitely suggest so continuing to have those discussions. Great. Well, we were planning on actually uh, doing that research and focusing on those three areas that I mentioned before, the logistics, the cost, and the security, and asking them, could they be ready? Um, is, are there other things that you think other types of information we need to do besides that? And, Maybe uh, we can't be more specific than that right now, but. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I think you have to look into what other states are doing and they might might not know those costs. They might not, you know, since it's not a legal option in New York right now, um, you know, they probably, I would, unless there are serious vote by mail enthusiasts, <laughs> they may not have investigated the costs of saying, you know, um, that um, implementing the barcode technology that I referred to earlier, or the postal tracking technology, or um, and not to say that you have have to have all of these technologies, but you know, these are um, these 
these have to be explored and these costs have to be considered. It's definitely, as I said, it's not an overnight switch. <laughs> it's going to take planning and you want to make sure it's done right because you want to make sure every vote gets counted. Great. Well, this can be one of the silver linings that can come out of these tragic, um, under these tragic circumstances. After the primary, we're going to start this survey and um, also a public educational campaign about vote by mail going into November election. There is another partner in this effort who could not be here today, but um, Indivisible New York, um, I think Ulster chapter or New York 19 chapter will be um, part of this campaign as well. Great. Okay, before we go, could you please um, repeat one more time what the voters need to know, the dates and the, um, uh, the procedures that they need to go through to cast their votes in uh, the primary and November election? Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so first off, everyone should have received their absentee ballot for the primary. Uh, and if you, if you have not, uh, then um, you should contact your board of elections. Now, not everyone ha has a primary, so keep that in mind as well. <laughs> and the primaries differ in different places, you know. So, um, but but uh, if if you do have a primary race in your in your district, a, a state or or a federal primary. Um, and you haven't received a ballot, contact your board of elections. Uh, but you, uh, if um, if you have received, you mean the application? I'm Jeff. sorry, application. Thank you for that catch. Uh, uh, so yes, you should have received a, the ballot application in the mail, uh, along with a postage postage paid return envelope to send it in, if you choose that route. If you do decide you want to participate, uh, to cast your vote uh, by absentee ballot, uh, you would check off the temporary illness box, which unless you have another excuse, you other <laughs> there are people in this state that vote by absentee ballot for, for other reasons listed on the absentee ballot. But if you are, if you are voting via absentee ballot, because of COVID, then you can check the, the temporary illness box, send that ballot application in. By, it has to be received by the 16th of June. You can also drop it off at your board of elections, county board of elections. And uh, then you will receive, that gets processed and you will, you will receive a, a ballot, an actual ballot in the mail, uh, which you can fill out and then uh, mail in uh, or drop off it, uh, at your board of elections. If you mail it in, it absolutely has to be postmarked in order to count. It has to be postmarked by election day, uh, by the 23rd. So very important. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much, Senator. And Andrea and Dennis, if anyone's um, interested in finding out more about Represent Us, how can they find out? How can they get in touch with you? Yes, it's representalbanyny at gmail.com. We also have a website, uh, represent, uh, excuse me, albanyrepresent.us is our website. Thank you. And the uh, web address for Forge Collective is forgeartcollective.org and you can contact me through that website. Thank you so much, Senator. Um, I know that this was a very busy week for you, so we really appreciate your taking the time to speak with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Senator. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Jennifer.